So uh, today we're going to get to see something new, which is uh, editing. Uh, I was not able to get this one done in a single take, so in addition to my ordinary low audio quality and I suppose also my relatively low video quality, we're going to get a chance to see uh, me try my hand at uh, editing, which I imagine is also going to be relatively poor. Um, so let's just uh, let's say that uh, earnestness in lo-fi perhaps equates to uh, integrity, and when you see the the uh, the production values suddenly skyrocket. I, I hope you have the appropriate level of cynicism. All right, so on to the content. What I want to do is I want to talk about, um, I think, three things, all of which are, are, are roughly bucketed under the notion of the, the operating methodology of the city. How is this thing going to happen? And uh, those three things, broadly speaking, are its fundamental um, a design for emergence. Uh, the the nature of the team, who, and uh, the question of how does it enter into relationship with the, the rest of the world, the outside world, or at least one aspect of that relationship. All right, so bucket number one, the, the fundamental operating methodology, uh, designing for emergence. So you know, we know we're, we're dealing with something which, which must fundamentally be autopoetic. Uh, we cannot now uh, even meaningfully hope to design it. And this is not that kind of an object. It cannot be a complicated system. It has to be intrinsically complex, which means it needs to intrinsically uh, become uh, in a way that is in many ways going to be quite surprising. So let's use the metaphor of the, of the uh, developing embryo. Okay, well, to, to get to an embryo, you need a couple of core ingredients. Um, first, you need an egg. Uh, second, you need a sperm. Uh, the egg and the sperm have to come together in the right way. The, the, the DNA has to, has to merge and has to provide the right kind of framework to steward the autopoetic process of uh, bringing nutrients into now a developing organism. Then, then you have to have the ability to take that, that egg, which is now potent, and embed it into, into a womb, in, into a context that can provide it with those nutrients uh, to then f allow its autopoetic process to actually to go into the world. By the way, that womb will also need to be embedded into the context of a mother who can be in relationship with the larger world and bring those resources into the womb, which then brings it into the zygote, which eventually becomes an embryo. Okay, so that's the that's the metaphor, and that's the thing. All right, so the idea behind Civium is to say, okay, do we have uh, the right DNA? Right? Do we have the right design uh, criteria? Do we have the right uh, deep code? Right? Do we really understand what are the necessary ingredients, the necessary and sufficient conditions to begin the process, to enable this thing to go forward? Um, and then when we talk about, say, for example, the, the, the womb, I think largely this is going to be the who, the, the people who come in, the capacity that they bring, the resources that they bring, the history that they bring, um, and, and, and the space that they establish to actually allow in and among themselves, and and in the larger world that is now, I think, going to be contemplating this question, uh, the emergent possibility uh, of civium, with a lot of failure, and a lot of failing is going to happen, and can they weather that storm and grow into it? And then can other groups come in? Right? So the, the people, in some sense, are simultaneously the the core nutrient. You know, as people are attracted into this and they bring their capacity, uh, they increase the capacity of the whole to become what it is. Um, and also are in some sense the uh, the context uh, that are that create the space for it to be able to to, to develop. And then and then we actually finally in, in some fundamental sense have the relationship with the outside world. All right. So let's let's talk about those two components, the the who, in particular, some of the characteristics or some of the sensibility of the zeitgeist of the the initial who, the the node zero uh, cohort. And then also, how does this thing come into relationship with the larger world? The people who are in fact forming the civium in the beginning, so like node zero is what I'm calling it, uh, will obviously have to be coming in extremely mindful of this of this reality. Right? So this is a this is a startup mindset. The notion is is not, for example, to create an intentional community which has a certain um, insularity to it. Right? The idea is not to to go to Costa Rica and sort of hang out with each other uh, for a couple of decades and hope things are cool. Uh, the intent is to create something that ultimately, at the end of, of, the, of the arc, um, effectively everybody on the planet has chosen to participate in. 
Um, so it has a lot of that vibe to it. Right? It's a vibe of uh, creation. It's a vibe of innovation. Right? It's a vibe of working really hard with the essence of node zero to be simultaneously livingness, like humaning together, and also the exploration of how the autopoetic process of civium can be furthered maximally. Right? So it's that kind of a sensibility. So think of it a little bit like a, a Mars expedition. Right? The startup crew of Node Zero is going to have to come with uh, a lot of mojo and a lot of commitment to, doing, uh, to building something, to building something that is hard to build uh, and with a lot of uh, uh, novelty, a lot of exploration in, in what can and can't be done. Then the, the last characteristic, which I think is rather uh, important, is we, we talked about the notion of, of, of the requirement of the civium having a relationship with its exterior, which is, say, the rest of the world, and the, the necessity, certainly at the beginning and in, in, in probably for quite some long period of time, maybe even generations, um, of being able to pull resources from the outside world into the civium. Well, you might think of that as sort of like a a balance of trade, like with the way a nation state operates. And if, if the, well, this doesn't necessarily work that much these days, but call it a decade ago, uh, or let's call it four decades ago, if the United States wanted to import cars from Japan, then the United States needed to have something that it was providing to Japan, maybe food, right? So we gave them food, they gave us cars, the balance of trade was roughly even, and you're good to go. Uh, certainly, I can, I can be pretty confident that Civium is going to have to have something in the direction of, of, a, of an even balance of trade. So what's that look like? Well, it is my, my sense that what it looks like is um, the, the civium should be uh, the most generative location. Uh, it should be a place where the, the synergy value of, of creative collaboration, of what happens when you bring human beings together to collaborate with each other is at a high watermark, better, better than the best of what exists in the world today. So places like, say, uh, you know, Google, which notoriously has very high creativity and very high talented people, um, would be the standard, and that the civium should be more generative. And so areas where that kind of collaborative creativity has value, like the cutting edge of, of science and technology, um, is places where the civium should have sustainable competitive advantage. It should just simply outcompete everybody else. And I don't necessarily mean the, the node zero, where you're talking about 150 people isn't going to outcompete Google across all dimensions. But as more and more people enter into the, the mesh, uh, the mesh should, in fact, relatively quickly begin to grab whole territories of creative endeavor, particularly in the virtual domain, and uh, be decisively uh, outcompetitive. And this is important because that's a lot of the future, right? A lot of the, the things that matter in the future economy, any possible future economy, are of that sort, right? Things that have to do with uh, like artificial intelligence and uh, virtual reality and uh, you know, cutting edge new technologies around energy and waste disposal and uh, you know, fill in the blank. Um, that kind of thing should be the bread and butter, right? That should be what Civium does better than anyone else. And therefore, uh, provides the basis for its uh, balance of trade with the outside world. Uh, so keep that in mind. Right? We're not an even vaguely talking about a, uh, an eco-village that tries to trade you know, organic uh, artichokes or a uh, you know, hippie commune that tries to trade handmade uh, woven baskets with the rest of the world. Quite, quite the opposite, actually. The intent of the civium is that it's trading the most valuable things and is able to outcompete the rest of the world in providing those most valuable things um, by its very nature, by its design.